Welcome back in to the Clay Edwards Show. Guys, I was going to do an, a different ad read here, so I'll, I'll move it down one. I want to tell you about guns and gear real quick. Hunter just texted me from over there at the Central Mississippi's premier gun ammo accessory store, Guns and Gear, on Highway 51 North in Gluckstadt, Mississippi. They're under attack by big tech. Facebook has unpublished their legally allowed Facebook page because, you know, guns are bad. Get out there. Support them today. They still they still slanging them hot, smoking hot deals of the day at Guns and Gear, located at fifty one North Gluckstadt, Mississippi, at Yandell Road. Don't let don't let Big Tech ha- have you believe they aren't there. Facebook um, deleted all of my personal accounts and business accounts. Well, they deleted my personal accounts, which had my business accounts attached to them. <laughs> So I could not access my business accounts, and they eventually got them deactivated. Long story short, that could be a nightmare for a business. It, it really can. Um, my detail shop suffered greatly by having my Facebook page deleted a week before I opened. <laughs> um, that, that was a huge, huge blow to me in a, uh, in a business that's very word-of-mouth dependent. So <clears throat> anyway, get out there. The Guns and Gear, Highway 51 North in Gluckstadt, and support those guys. He just lost 18,000 followers uh, because Facebook woke up today and said, guns are bad. Guns are bad. Bad guys got guns. Yeah, Good guys got them too. They're the home of No Limit Ammo. They can take care of all your coding and gunsmithing needs as well. Did you get a gun for Christmas that you might not want, like, or need? Go sell it to the guys at Guns and Gear. Get a gun you want, or just get some cash. See them today. Check them out online, gunsandgearms.com. They got a new e-commerce site coming soon. It'll be up hopefully by the end of the month, but that's neither here nor there. We'll keep you posted on that. Go see them in person today. Sit around, talk business with them. Y'all know you need to be buying a a box of ammo. That needs to be your goal this year. As we approach doomsday post-election, Y'all need to be trying to buy a box of ammo every week and just be ready. Be ready. Start your, uh, start your preparedness at Guns in Gear, Highway 51 North in Gluckstadt. Shout out to Hunter and the team out there. Happy New Year. Happy belated Christmas to all those guys and the hard work they do. Uh, Jess just texted in on the Guns and Gear text line and says, I can't find them on Facebook anymore. Yep, Jess, that's what I was just saying. Facebook has delisted their page because you know pictures of guns so stupid you know like one of the things i used to really love was like to go like watch gun videos and stuff and it's like they they have tried to you know i keep saying we, we should never allow all the crime and violence to be normalized we shouldn't allow them to demonize guns i mean sure can guns cause unspeakable horrors? Uh, yeah, absolutely. But imagine the unspeakable horrors not having guns causes. Uh, you know, there's just evil in the world. How you choose to fight it is what separates the the winners from the losers. <laughs> Who gets to write the history books? I'm writing mine. Nobody else is gonna write mine for me. All right, I posted a picture. This says so much about race relations in and around central Mississippi. I posted a picture on my Facebook and my Instagram on New Year's Eve. Capitol Street, 1950s. I don't know the exact date. It just looks like, you're, you know, different versions of this picture have been floating around for years, but it's the first time I've seen this picture. So it's really cool. I had some, some out of town or posted it. So I'll just admit, I, I stole the post. And made it my own because I wanted the engagement. I knew it was going to do well. And it did. It's been shared. It's been liked over 4,700 times. It's been shared almost a thousand times on Facebook alone. And what's astonishing to me, before I get into all of the angry black Democrats comments, is this, we're talking about a city here that was able to rebuild after being completely burned down post or during the Civil War. 
to become one of the third or fourth. At one point, Jackson was one, third or fourth largest city in the South, maybe outside of like Atlanta. I mean, G- Jackson, Birmingham, Memphis. These are all cities that were mentioned together. You don't mention them together anymore unless you're talking about crime numbers. J- Jackson is uh is not on the same. Jackson ain't even like with a Monroe anymore. And we used, we used to laugh and people would all compare Jackson and Monroe, Louisiana. And like, no, Jackson's more like Shreveport. We're a major city. Not anymore. Not anymore. Anyway, I digress. It's a beautiful picture of Capitol Street. We were able to rebuild this city to that point through hard work, hustle, and grinding, and just American values, Christian American hard work values, you know, all that great stuff. Post World War II, people came home and they wanted to make America great again. And that's exactly what they did. They made Jackson, Mississippi great. But you know what Jackson ain't going to survive? What Jackson ain't going to be able to rebuild from? 30 plus years of far left Democrat control. And Jackson's always been controlled by Democrats. There's never been a Republican mayor in Jackson. Never. Not once. I've argued with people. I mean, a simple Google search. And, and, and y'all can figure this out. And by no means is Google uh, right leaning. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is one of the things Google ain't going to lie about. And in particular, Jackson ain't going to survive this free the land idiot and his merry band of idiots that are currently running the city in a style of what I call reparations politics. They're getting their reparations and they're taking it from you. They're fellow black citizens. So anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way. It, it survived being burned down by the Yankees and it was rebuilt into one of the top three, four, five cities in the entire South. And now it's not even a top 20 city in the South. Let's just peruse through and read some of the comments. Um, so I said I said that comment there. Said this, and I'm reading some of this in live time. I have not read all these, so y'all bear with me. And I'd love to get y'all's thoughts on this. 601 879 Zero two is the phone line. The guns and gear text line is 769-241-1944. I said, the city was able to rebuild after being burned down during the Civil War, but won't be able to survive the reign of terror by Chakwe Lumumba's merry band of free the land thugs. Southside Zoe says, Clay Edwards is a resident of Jackson. Let me speak facts. If the governor wasn't still racist, he would work with the Jackson mayor, and we all know crap runs downhill. And they're not going to stand up for, for it. And they have stolen welfare money, have have the money for Jackson water to Tate, hometown, sent the, I, I wish people could type. He said he sent the money for Jackson water to Tate Reeves' hometown of Senatobia and since enforced Jim Crow laws. Now you tell me if it's still his fault. You're an idiot, Southside Zoe. Southside Zoe, you're stupid. Which part of this do I want to hit the most? Says, if the mayor would work with the, if the governor would work with the city and the mayor, what do you expect him to do? He came in and fixed your water. Now we can get into a debate about the the age of the pipes and all that stuff. The entire state and the city of Jackson have been kicking that ball Kicking that can down the road for 30 years. Should should pipes have been fixed at some point? Yeah, but you know, the city's responsible for that. No matter what they tell you, the city's responsible for that. The city is also responsible for the amount of employees that work at its water plant. Y'all scream, you cry about alleged Jim Crow laws. You know, the white man making rules for the black man. But you want the white man to come in and run your water. Fix that. Make that right. You, you, you can't have it both ways. 
Tate Reeves didn't steal a penny of the welfare money. Nobody lost a penny of the welfare money but the state. The welfare recipients, they trust me. They got their money. And Tate had nothing to do with that. Quit believing everything you see on the news. Uh, some idiot said, Zoe, preach, brother, preach. Damien tells me, Clay, Chalkway secured $700 million for the city water. Now, Benny, Benny Thompson secured that, and that's the point. The federal government should have never had to do that. that <laughs> and who did, they, who did they bring in to, to make sure it got fixed right? White boy Bob. Ain't that what Kim calls uh, Ted Hennepin? They, they knew. The judge knew. Was it Wingate? Knew not to let none of these free the land idiots touch that money. The federal government knew. That's why they sent. That's why they sent Hennepin down here. And this, and this free the land bunch was able to dictate contractors and all this other stuff. You were going to get about two or three pipes repaired closest to wherever they live. You were going to get another idiot with a useless degree that ain't never worked a day in their life, given a supervisor job that they don't have any idea how to do. I could go on and on and on. They were going to get all that because they were black. Because that was going to be all that mattered. And they were going to tell you, we just hired the first black dot, dot, dot. But people got a real problem. Somebody tells me I have no idea what I'm talking about. There's a real problem with the folks in Jackson and accountability. I mean, they are still crying about what happened at Woolworths back in the day. People getting mustard thrown on them. It's a terrible incident. None of us deny that what happened in what I guess was known as the civil rights era was bad. But, bro, you have had since 1960, 53 years. You've had, let's just say, 50, you've had 50 years to write this. Let's just say... Since 90. Let's just say since 2000, you've had 23 years. 23 years. And, and, and nothing has gotten better. Everything has only gotten worse. When white folks move out, you call them racist. Call it white flight. When they try to move back in, you call them racist, but you call it gentrification. Everything I see for the last couple of days, talking about this HB 1020, black city, black city, black city, majority black city, black city, black city. I mean, do y'all want white people involved or not? Let's take a break. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. Real quick, the segment brought to you by A1 Gear and Auto. Guys, if you have an automotive repair, if you have any automotive repair needs, get down to A1 Gear and Auto in Florence, Mississippi. Get it taken care of today with a check engine light, squeaky brakes. They can handle it all. What they specialize in, though, is your ring and pinion, your gears, all that good stuff. Look, you, when you're getting your car worked on, one of the most important things, it's all very important, but one of the most important things is being diagnosed properly the first time. That's going to save you time. That's going to save you money. Because most places, if they don't diagnose it properly and you approve the work and you agree that that's the problem, well, whether that part needed to be replaced or not, you own that part now. A1 Guaranado is going to get it diagnosed right the first time. Now, do places make mistakes? Absolutely. Sometimes it is what it is. The second most important thing is how long are you going to be without your vehicle? Well, this could be the second or third, but either way, top three things, no particular order. How about that? How fast the work's going to get done. And then, of course, the other most important thing is that it's done right. <laughs> and uh, that may be the number one most important thing, being done right. They're going to take care of all those three things at A1 Gear and Auto. Go see Justin and the team today for all of your automotive repair needs. The only thing they don't work on is diesel engines. But they do work on your diesel engine <clears throat> vehicles, rear end, not rear ends, but uh, 
ring and pinion and all that good stuff. So that absolutely their their rear ends. I I want to continue. I want to continue reading some of the replies to this post because it says a lot about race relations and where we're at and how the black community views us as the white community. Let me rephrase that. How the black urban community views us. They, they blame all of Jackson's failures, current failures on us. Uh, we, we took resources from the city, except see, they keep, they have this mindset that, uh, it's a welfare mindset that you're co- supposed to constantly take care of their problems. You you can't cut you can't quit charging people for their water and expect somebody to step in and give you the money that you didn't charge. I don't know how I, I, you can't defund cops. You can't neuter the police department and then expect somebody to come in and start a new police department, even though we did. I'm I'm convinced. I, I hope that some of these people are just bots, you know, just racially agitating bots, because it's working. Rukua is a rock. Says, "Dang, look at the vibrant city. Look, look at what the vibrant. Dang, look at look at. Okay, this is clearly not a bot. This is an idiot. Dang, look at vibrant the city is before folks started intentionally cutting off resources." flooding the streets with drugs and guns and diverting funds to outside surrounding cities. Mo Rogers says, Tulsa, Oklahoma was safe at 1.2. I wonder what happened. Or is that history trying to be erased as well? I'm curious what a couple of the replies. Somebody said it wasn't safe back then. It was, Justin says, it was safer than today. When Jackson has the number one homicide rate in the country. Okay, here's one that I'm interested in. And I'm, I know this probably ain't, ain't great radio, ain't great radio, but I'm saying very true to my brand. And these are the things, these are the quote unquote tough conversations Democrats keep telling me that we got to have. So I'm having it. Uh, you Thomases of the world, you're welcome to call in and defend this nonsense. You know, we just spent the first half of this hour talking about Jackson homicides. Now, Overwhelmingly, ninety nine percent of those ain't ain't fall on the the blame for those falls at the feet of one particular group of people. It ain't the folks that move to the suburbs. I know that. Timothy Whitehead says, "My dad used to tell me a lot of nightmare stories of Mississippi back from back then. If you were black, you did not want to get caught by yourself or in a certain part of town at night." It's sad all the race all the races couldn't enjoy the beauty and prosperity of the town at that time. Well, one thing I know for sure is you definitely don't want to get caught uh, by yourself in certain parts of the town now at night. That, that, it's way more Jackson, Mississippi is way more dangerous for black folks now than the racist of the civil rights era could have ever made it be. Let's take a call. You're on there. Yeah, this is oh, Thank you. I, I just looked at your photo on Facebook, and that's a picture of downtown in the 50s, right? Mm-hmm. Gorgeous downtown. Once yeah, gorgeous yeah, downtown. Yeah, yeah. Prosperous. So, yeah, my grandmother told me that you could, black people weren't even allowed downtown Jackson in the 50s. That's a fact. It doesn't take away from how nice it is, how nice it was now versus that. How nice it was then no, versus no, no, now. No, no, no. You know, what's nice is when we all are together. This was nice. Not separate. Okay, even you talked about that not too long ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. You said black men and white men and Chinese men, all of us coming together and doing and taking care of business, right? What none of that, what, what doesn't change, what does not change is... You said that we all should come together. I agree. We should. We do. But women and family. How did Capitol Street get into the condition it's in today? But 1950, during the 50s, things were separate. Okay? Black people weren't even allowed downtown. And then in 71, they shot up Jackson State. 
uh, in 1970, they shot up Jackson State. What are you talking about? What is that? What is it? Black people on the police force in Jackson in the 50s. What does that have to do? What does what Jackson State have to do with, with Capitol Street turning into a war zone? Because that's what started that thing down there at Jackson State. That, that what happened at Jackson State was started because black people couldn't even come to downtown Jackson in the 50s. Do your research, Clay. You're a dummy, man. You don't know what you be talking about. I know that I know that Jackson turned into a third world hellhole Clay, the second the far left reparationists Clay, got Clay, their got, Clay, got Clay, their way. The such thing as racism in Mississippi. It ain't never left. It's not going nowhere because of y'all. No, people because of like y'all. You. Because of people. What 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 what, what I'm supposed to let you treat me like an animal? And, and, and you okay with that? I, I just want to let you think of me as an animal, me and my kids as an animal. You got life. I'm gonna cut him off there. He was about to say something, something he'd regret. Um, Jackson, Mississippi, is the most dangerous place in the world for a black man. It is what it is. Y'all gonna be as mad at me as you want to be. That's fact. Two of the last three years, it was the number one deadliest place. In America, per capita. Number one. Deadliest place in America, per capita. Jackson, Mississippi. Let's take a break. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. I want to say one thing. We're going to take a call. The call will take us home for the day. I'm going to say one thing. Blacks absolutely were allowed in downtown Jackson in the 1950s. You had to dress right. And then Fair Street, last time I checked, is still and has always been downtown Jackson. Let's take a call. Hey, brother, you got about two minutes. Hey, you know, I, I couldn't help but call out to listen to the animus of the guy that called you earlier. You know, my mother calls me all the time and she's afraid to walk around. I live in D.C. and she's afraid of the blacks, right? He's talking about something 50 years ago, and he's expressing all this animus at white people. But where is his animus toward the blacks to make it, you know, dangerous for his mother, his grandmother, or him to walk down the streets of Jackson today? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, that's the point I make. You know, look, if you're if if you're a surviving real racist, a, a Klansman, just what a nasty, nasty, evil people, if you're sitting back in hiding today. You have to sit back and look at Jackson and be like, my goodness, there's no need for us. Look at what they're doing to themselves. I mean, yeah. where's the outrage? Yeah, where's the outrage at all these immigrants coming here? You know, Clay, you said something earlier that piqued my attention. You said, that, you know, this welfare and all this stuff that is meant for the blacks. And I think that's part of the problem. It's not meant for blacks. It's meant for Americans, right? And. The, the whole argument that, that the blacks have when they do complain about immigration is that the welfare is theirs. When they complain about Brent Farr, it's like he stole something from them in terms of the welfare. And I think that's really where they see white people, you know, white people's place in America is to provide the welfare for them. That's what that's what it feels like, and I hate that. I hate that we've gotten to that point. I, I really appreciate you calling in this morning, brother. i got to let you go. Have a blessed day. No Happy problem. New Year. Uh-huh. All right, look, man, got about 10 seconds left. I appreciate everybody this morning. This is what 2024 is going to bring you. We're going to keep having hard-hitting conversations. We're going to keep having those tough conversations that they say we're not allowed to have. See you all tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this clip of today's Clay Edwards show. You can tune in live every Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 a.m. on 103.9 FM, WYAB in Central Mississippi. You can stream it worldwide and live at WYAB.com, the TuneIn app, or Alexa. Just search WYAB. And, of course, you're listening now on a podcast, so you can just hit subscribe where you're at. We update daily right here on The Clay Edwards Show. And check out all things Clay Edwards at ClayEdwardsShow.com for shirts and more. Peace.